Hi guys, welcome back to engineeringdocs.com. In the previous video, we discussed the shear force and bending moment diagrams of a simply supported beam with a point load at the midpoint. In this video, we'll go through the shear force and bending moment diagrams of a simply supported beam with an eccentric point load. So, happy learning and if you haven't subscribed the channel yet, please do subscribe and press the bell icon and that gives me the motivation to do more and more videos. Here I have shown a simply supported beam with an eccentric load W acting at a distance of A meter from the left end and B meter from the right end and the total length of the beam is L. Here the load W is not acting at the center of the beam and that's why it's uh, known as an eccentric load. Now due to this eccentric point load, we'll have reactions at the supports, right? These reactions will be in such a way so as to support or resist this externally applied eccentric point load. Now we'll see how we can find out the reactions at the supports. I have already explained in the previous videos that a simply supported beam is the one with a hinge support at one end and a roller support at the other end. Let RA be the reaction due to hinge support at the end A and let RB be the reaction due to roller support at the end B. Now, in order to find out these reactions RA and RB, we have to take the moments about A or take the moments about B. Let's take the moments about A. So, summation MA will be equal to 0 because we know that uh, the bending moments at the two supports of a simply supported beam is equal to 0. So, summation MA will be equal to 0, summation M MB will also be equal to 0. For time being, let's consider summation MA equal to 0. So, summation MA implies that the resultant of the moments due to the forces acting on the beam will be equal to 0. So, let's uh, assume that we are considering a section at this end A. So, these loads that, that is the eccentric load as well as the reaction at the end B will be on the right portion of the section. And on the right portion of the section, any moment in the anti-clockwise direction will be considered as positive and any moment in the clockwise direction will be considered as negative. Now, this RB has the tendency to rotate the beam in the anti-clockwise direction. We have to consider with respect to this section, okay, that is the section at the end A. So, this uh, RB with respect to the section at A uh, has the tendency to rotate this beam in the anti-clockwise direction. This is the anti-clockwise direction. So, the moment due to RB at the section A will be positive and the moment will be equal to RB into the perpendicular distance. Perpendicular distance is L. So, RB into L. Now, this load has the tendency to rotate the beam in the clockwise direction. See like this with respect to this section. So, the moment at this section will be equal to the load into the perpendicular distance that is W into A and it is in the clockwise direction. So, any moment on the right portion of the section in the clockwise direction will be considered as negative. So, minus W into A. So, RB into L minus W into A is equal to 0. Now, RB is equal to, we'll take this W into A to the RHS. So, WA by, now we'll take this L to the denominator. So, WA by L. Now, we'll consider the equilibrium of the forces. So, summation FY will be equal to 0. So, RA minus W plus RB will be equal to 0. Therefore, RA will be equal to W minus RB, which is equal to W minus, we know that RB is WA by L. So, WA by L, which is equal to WL minus WA by L, which is equal to, W is common here. So, W into L minus A by L. Now, L minus A is B, right? So, WB by L. Therefore, RA is equal to WB by L. Now, we have obtained the reactions RA and RB. So, let's find out the values of shear force and bending moments along the length of the beam. In order to find out these values, what do we have to do? We have to consider a section first. So, let's consider this section between the points A and C in order to find out the variation of shear force and bending moment between the points A and C. This section X is at a distance of X meters from the end A. Let's first find out the shear force at this section. 
In order to find out the shear force value at this section, we have to consider either the left portion or the right portion of the section. Let's consider the left portion of the section. On this uh, left portion of the section, we have a reaction force Ra acting in the upward direction. And we already know that shear force is equal to the algebraic sum of the forces acting on either the left portion or the right portion of the section. Here, since we have considered the left portion of the section, shear force will be equal to the algebraic sum of the forces acting on the left portion of the section. Here we have only the reaction force Ra, so the resultant force is equal to Ra. And it is in the upward direction. So any force acting in the upward direction on the left portion of the section will be considered as positive. Therefore, shear force is equal to plus Ra, that is Fx is equal to plus Ra, which is equal to plus Wb by L. Now, this value will be constant between the points A and C since there are no other point loads between the points A and C. So, the shear force value between the points A and C will be equal to plus Wb by L and this value remains constant between the points A and C. Now, in order to find out the variation of shear force between the points C and B, we have to consider a section between these two points. Let this section be at a distance of x meters from the end A. Now, the shear force at this section will be equal to the algebraic sum of the forces on either the left portion or the right portion of the section. Let's consider the left portion of the section. Here we have a reaction force acting in the upward direction and an eccentric load W acting in the downward direction. Any force in the upward direction on the left portion of the section will be considered as positive and any force in the downward direction on the left portion of the section will be considered as negative. So Ra is positive and W is negative. So the resultant of these two forces will be Ra minus W and it will be equal to the shear force at the section. So Fx is equal to Ra minus W which is equal to Ra is Wb by L. So Wb by L minus W which is equal to Wb minus cross multiply WL by L which is equal to minus W into L minus B by L which is equal to now L minus B is A right. So minus WA by L. Therefore, the shear force at this section is equal to minus Wa by L. It is negative. And this value of shear force remains constant between the points C and B because we don't have any other point loads between these two points. Now, this value of shear force can also be found out by considering the light right portion of the section. So, on the right portion of the section, we have only uh, one reaction force Rb acting in the upward direction and this Rb is equal to Wa by L. Now any force acting in the upward direction on the right portion of the section is considered as negative. So the shear force at this section will be equal to minus Wa by L. So you can consider either the left portion or the right portion for finding out the shear force and bending moment values acting at a section. Now. Uh, this uh, value of shear force is negative between the uh, points C and B and the value of shear force is positive between the points A and C. Between the points A and C, shear force is equal to plus Wb by L and between the points C and B, it is equal to minus Wa by L. So, from this we can understand that at this point C, the shear force has changed its value from plus Wb by L to minus W A by L. Let's find out the bending moment values acting along the length of the beam. First, let's consider a section between the points A and C in order to obtain the variation of bending moment between these two points. And this section is at a distance of x meters from the end A. Now, in order to find out the value of bending moment at this section, we have to consider either the left portion or the right portion of the section. Let's consider the left portion of the section. On the left portion of the section, we have a reaction force, Ra, acting in the upward direction and this reaction force has the tendency to rotate the beam in the clockwise direction. And any moment in the clockwise direction on the left portion of the section will be considered as positive. Therefore, the moment due to this reaction force at this section will be positive and its value will be equal to Ra into perpendicular distance. Perpendicular distance is x. So, Ra into x. Therefore, the bending moment at this section will be equal to Ra into 
x. Ra is Wb by L. So, Wb by L into x. Now, at this end A, x will be equal to 0. So, Ma will be equal to Wb by L into 0. Just substitute 0 in the place of x. So, Wb by L into 0 which is equal to 0. We already know that the bending moment at the two supports of a simply supported beam is equal to 0. We can also obtain that value by using this method. Now, at C, that is at the point C, x will be equal to A, right? So, mc will be equal to wb by l into a, which is equal to wab by l. So, at the end a, we have bending moment equal to 0 and at uh, the point C, bending moment is equal to wab by l. From this equation, it's clear that bending moment is a function of x. That is, it is proportional to the distance of this section from the end a. So, as this distance increases, bending moment also increases till it reaches the point C. That is, it follows a straight line law. So, the bending moment increases from a value of 0 to a value of WAB by L from the point A to C. The bending moments at both the supports of a simply supported beam is 0. So, MB will be equal to 0. Therefore, the bending moment decreases from a value of WAB by L to a value of 0 as it moves from the point C to the end B. You can also check this by uh, considering a section between the points C and B. Uh, let's consider a section uh, between the points C and B at a distance of x meters from the end A. Now, we can obtain the variation of bending moment between the points C and B. Uh, now, uh, in order to find out uh, the value of bending moment acting at this section, we have to consider the left portion or the right portion. Let's consider the left portion of the section. On the left portion of the section, we have uh, a reaction force Ra acting in the upward direction and has the tendency to rotate the beam in the clockwise direction with respect to this section. And any moment in the clockwise direction will be considered as positive. Therefore, the moment due to this um, reaction force at this section will be positive. Now, uh, this eccentric load has the tendency to rotate the beam in the anti-clockwise direction with respect to this section, right? And any moment in the anti-clockwise direction on the left portion of the section will be considered as negative. Therefore, the moment at this section due to this load will be negative. Therefore, uh, the moment due to this reaction force will be equal to Ra into perpendicular distance, that is Ra into x. And the moment due to this load will be equal to this load into this perpendicular distance. This distance will be equal to x minus a, right? So, Ra into x minus w into x minus a. Now, at C, this x will be, at this point C, this x will be equal to a, right? So, mc will be equal to Ra into a minus w into a minus a. Just substitute a in the place of x. Now, this term will be 0. Therefore, mc will be equal to Ra into A. Ra is Wb by L into A, which is equal to Wab by L. Now, at B, this x will be equal to L. So, Ra into L minus W into L minus A. Now, L minus A is B. Therefore, Ra is Wb by L. So, Wb by L into L minus W into B. Now, you can cancel these two L's. So, WB minus WB which will be equal to 0. So, the moment at this uh, end will be equal to 0. Let's draw the shear force diagram. For that, let's draw the baseline first. So, this is the baseline. Now, at this end A, we have shear force is equal to plus WB by L. So, let's mark it above the baseline. Now, this value remains constant between the points A and C. So, let's mark it using a horizontal straight line like this. Now, at this point C, shear force changes its value from WB by L to minus WA by L. So, let's mark that variation using a vertical straight line like this. That is, shear force changes from plus WB by L to minus WA by L. Now, between the points C and B, shear force remains equal to minus WA by L. Since it's negative, we have marked it below the baseline. Now, we'll mark this um, uh, variation of shear force between the points C and B using a 
straight line horizontal straight line because it remains constant between the points c and b so this is the shear force diagram of a simply supported beam with an eccentric point load so you can shade this region and this region and uh, mark it as positive and negative now let's draw the bending moment diagram for that we'll draw the baseline now uh, at uh, the point A and at the point B, we have bending moment is equal to 0 because bending moment at uh, the two supports of a simply supported beam is 0. Now, at the point C, we have bending moment is equal to W AB by L and uh, between A and C, bending moment variation is W B by L into X that is, it is with respect to the distance of the section from the end A. And it follows a straight line law. So, from uh, the point A to the point C, the bending moment increases. So, it increases from a value of 0 to a value of WAB by L as it moves from the end A to the point C. Now, we have the bending moment equal to 0 at the end B. And here we have WAB by L. And here also the bending moment is proportional to the distance of uh, the section from the end A, that is, it follows a straight line law. So, here the bending moment decreases from WAB by L at the point C to 0 at the end B. So, this is the bending moment diagram of a simply supported B with an eccentric point load. Now, you can shade this region and mark it as positive. Since the bending moment is positive in this case, we have marked it above the baseline. So, this is the shear force and bending moment diagrams of a simply supported beam with an eccentric point load. Here in the shear force diagram, between the points A and C, the shear force uh, remains equal to plus WB by L like this. And between the points C and B, the shear force value remains equal to minus WA by L. And in the bending moment diagram, we can see that the bending moment is equal to WAB by L at the point C and its value is equal to 0 at both the ends of the simply supported B and its value increases from the end A to the point C between the points A and C and between the points C and B, its value decreases from WAB by L to 0. Please do like and share the video and subscribe the channel. Thank you.